Hey friends, Kate from Venison for Dinner here. I have all these different bulk dried herbs out because I'm going to make a bunch of loose leaf tea today. We need to restock and I thought I'd show you. They help you relax and let go and we all need this in our life. So I'm obviously not a herbalist and I'm gonna just run over quickly why I'm adding these different herbs in and then I'll show you kind of my mentality on things I'm making. All these herbs have herbs have a lot more benefits than what I'm gonna say, but we don't wanna be here all day, fire, friends. So, fire, fire. a lot of these are general immune boosters. Fire, fire. I don't know if you can hear the wild children in the background. Anyhow, okay. Licorice. I can't remember why licorice. Something to do with sore throats. Hmm. Can't remember that one. Okay, licorice, liver, kidneys, circulatory, cough, bacterial, viral, everything. Herbs are so versatile. Telsi is an immune booster. Nettle is like an amazing multivitamin. Astragalus is an immune booster, as is echinacea root. So these are just like general good things to be consuming. Calendula is very nice on your insides and detoxing and all that. Elderberry is a superfood and also adds like a bit of a fruity taste to your tea. Hibiscus is good for cardiovascular health. Marshmallow root coats your mucous membranes. It helps not only with sore throats and dry noses, but if you have um, like UTI problems, it will help soothe and coat that. We do this, kids' faces. We, do, we add this into tea for sore throats and such. Lemon balm is relaxing, good for anxiety and stress. Hey Rowan, inside voices. Ginger is amazing for circulation. So this ginger we buy is called Tea Cut. And it's um, little chunkies, little bitties. Chunkies, that's not the right word. Chopped up dried bits. Orange flavor, but also I dried way too many oranges for a Christmas craft. So now I've been repurposing, repurposing them in tea. It's really delicious. Mexican mint, or no, sorry, Peruvian mint. This is kind of a mint, like a lemony mint. It reminds you of marigolds a bit. It's flavorful mint, good for circulation. We love mint and tea. Roses are delicious, but also very good for emotional health. I know that's not where you thought I was going with this, but there you go. Roses are very good for your emotional health. So, this blend that I'm almost out of, it had calendula, roses, nettle, mint, and rose hips. That is what our family calls honey tea cow juice, based on Marius's grandpa used to make tea with like calendula and mint and marigold that he would pick and grow and add honey and milk and call it honey tea cow juice. This is one that I just made up based on what I had lots of, and we've been enjoying it. It's the oranges that I had excess of, rose petals, and dried huckleberries. Huckleberry is a regional term, um, from what I understand, um, but they're a little, they're kind of like a wild blueberry. So the next step, obviously, is to decide what we're putting in tea. Okay, so some of these things taste delicious, like ginger and hibiscus. Some of them taste like dirt, like nettle and ostra ostragalus. That's a really hard word, ostragalus. So you obviously in your tea want to go heavy on the things that taste good and then add in for good measure the things that don't taste this good. This is a balance. While I'm working on this stuff, 
Marius and the older kids are working on homeschooling. Marius is the primary homeschool teacher. He does a really good job. But since it's not an office day today for me, I'm puttering about in the kitchen and giving support where needed and enjoying doing this. Okay guys, I, I hear you. So we brew all of our loose leaf tea in French presses. Specifically, these ones are insulated. They keep it warm a long time. Um, it's zero waste. We don't have to use reusable tea bags. You don't have to strain out every cup. You just press it down, you're good to go. So we often also, because these are all herbal teas, they don't have black tea or green tea that will go bitter. <laughs> we'll drink the whole pot of tea. Careful how I pour here. <laughs> And then we'll refill it with hot water and let it steep a lot longer the second time. Like the first time, it only needs a minimum of 10 minutes. Although the longer you steep a herbal tea, the more you're going to get out of it. The second time, we'll let it steep like at least an hour because there isn't as much flavor, but there's still a lot. Water, please. Yeah. There's still a lot of benefits in the second round. Okay, so I've kind of figured out my flavor profiles on the different tea. I'm going to do one elderberry, hibiscus, rose, licorice. I feel like this works together flavor-wise. Both are going to get marshmallow, echinacea, ostra ostra Astragalus, Astragalus. One day I'll say this right. They're both going to get a little bit of these. I feel like these are not really assertive enough flavors. They're kind of just taste like bark roots. They are roots. So. The second one is going to have ginger, mint, nettle, and Tulsi, calendula, and lemon balm. So this one's going to be like a minty ginger. Those are really strong taste. They will overpower the nettle and the Tulsi flavors. Let's start with the elderberry hibiscus one for no reason other than it's on the left. And my brain always starts on the left, right? Like you read left to right, you start left to right. So because this flavor combination was on the left, I'm going to start it first. And I just had to rebuy a bunch of these is why I'm opening all these bags. They are old favorites. We've used for a long time, just new bags. Of course we need to try this. So I'm going to do it in a jar so we can see what color it is for fun. So just that. And um, okay, I'm probably putting like a tablespoon. Yeah, I'd say I'm putting a tablespoon in. If you were doing like black tea, green tea, you'd probably only put a tea teaspoon per mug but because we want like a stronger herbal infusion and these are pretty dense herbs um if they were really fluffy leafy herbs i would be putting like two tablespoons for a mug this tea strainer i've had forever i love it it fits great in a jar or a mug and we use it all the time it's just so basic and sturdy now let's move this all to a jar for storage so we got a new thermometer from Lee Valley, and you can't see through the window, but it's minus 16 Celsius right now. Up, it was minus 24, and then it dipped down to minus 26, and now it's on its way up again. We think we're going to remember what it is, but we're not. So we are going to label this. Okay, now onto the second batch, the one that's got the calendula, mint, ginger, all those things. What mostly stuck out to me while watching this in fast motion is how many times children came to see what I was doing or walked behind me. It's quite fun. Marius has got very into reading different herbal books with an emphasis on he's looking for herbs that we can grow here and he's got a whole plan of ones we're going to grow this year in our garden. Look at how beautiful these colors are. Nature is so neat. Um, yeah, just wild, beautiful. These are ready. I just let them steep until they cool down. Um, enough to drink them. I don't want to add milk. You could add milk, but I don't want to. 
So this is the one that was the hibiscus, elderberry, etc. Look at its beautiful color. It needs honey. Everything needs honey. Honey enhances the flavor. Um, I would, it does taste fruity though. Deliciously fruity. This honey is crystallized by the way, which if your honey is crystallized, congratulations, you for sure have raw honey. If they heat process it at all, it won't crystallize. So if your honey crystallizes, don't despair, rejoice. If it really matters that much to you, you can put this in a warm spot or put it in some, in a bucket of warm, or a pot of warm water, not boiling, not on the stove, and it will warm up. But in tea, it just dissolves, it's fine. I think this tea would also be really delicious with a little bit of lemon in it. Mm, that's good. Do you want to try this one, Mayor? I did add it. So this one's a ginger mint one. It is hotter still. Yeah, you can try the pink one. And I'm gonna re-steep those herbs because they definitely still have more to give there. It really doesn't taste like much. Let me add a bit of honey. So either it needs to steep longer or it needs more mint or more ginger. At this point, it doesn't really have any flavor that sticks out. With honey, it improves. It's hot. You probably it's too hot for you to drink. Okay, Mama. Yeah. Oh boy, that's some wild morning hair. But here's uh, me drinking some of that tea first thing in the morning while lighting the fire. And here's a typical morning scene in our house. We have two different teapots steeping. We have the honey and the milk out. I'm making French toast out of some few day old bread. Marius is trimming up some pork steaks for dinner. He's gonna marinate them and we're gonna make broth with the trimmings. And the kid's washing some dishes. Here's French toast and chaos. There's lots of chaos here, friends. <laughs> 